Wilkes in the shotgun. Takes the draw, wants to throw. Got Babbitt to 50, Babbitt to 45, 40, 35, 30. Made it to 20, 15, 10. Touchdown, Valdosta State. Van Adams from 65 yards for the touchdown. And Tom, you've talked about it all year. Van Adams' speed came to fruition there. The Chris Hatcher Show, your weekly look at Valdosta State University football with three-time Gulf South Conference Coach of the Year, Chris Hatcher. The Chris Hatcher Show is brought to you by Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers. Eat great, even late. Brewery Fresh Budweiser and Bud Light, who salute America's designated drivers. The Georgia Lottery, funding nearly three quarters of a million Hope Scholarships. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. In Valdosta, Nashville, Thomasville, and Cairo. The Houston Sports Medicine Center, your friends at Bank of America, and by Powerade, Sprite, and Coca-Cola. Here's your host, Dick Rocky, with Coach Hatcher and a look at this week's Blazer football action. Hello and welcome to the Chris Hatcher Show. I'm Dick Rocky along with the head coach. Valdosta State completes a 10-1 season with a big 30-17 win over in-state rival University of West Georgia. And coach, uh, a hard-fought game. West Georgia came here ready to play. We knew it was going to be a tough game, Dick. I mean, you got a lot of um, guys from this area that play for West Georgia. They were playing their last football game of the, se the season. They had a lot of seniors. Um, that was the last time they were going to suit up. And um, what a better way to finish off their season is to come down to Valdosta, Georgia and beat um, the number five ranked team in the country. It was a tight game all the way through until the very end where we were able to pull away a little bit. I thought our team was very businesslike in the way they went about approaching the game. We did, we came out a little flat. It showed we turned the ball over in some critical um, situations where we had an opportunity to blow the game wide open early on. Um, but nevertheless, anytime you beat your arch rival, um, you're excited about it. We retained the peach basket for the fourth year in a row. Um, we complete a 10-win season for the fourth year in a row. And this will be the fourth season in a row that we've advanced to the national playoffs. So what a great win for our guys. Great win for our seniors. And mentioning that, we, Valdosta State will be hosting Carson Newman for the second consecutive year, 1 o'clock at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Well, it's an awfully tough draw um, right off the bat with Carson Newman. They have tremendous tradition. Ken Sparks is an excellent football coach. Um, we beat them in a barn burner last year. Um, but when you get to the playoffs, there's only 16 teams left. You know everybody's a good football team. Um, and you got to play them all at some point or another. So we're awfully excited that we live to see another week. All right, Coach. We'll take a break and come back and look at the first half. The Chris Hatcher Show is also brought to you by Nigem Jewelers with two Valdosta locations. Colson Business Systems, your Minolta dealer in Valdosta. And the Remerton Grill, home of the Monday night Coca-Cola Chris Hatcher Radio Show. Welcome back to the Chris Hatcher Show. Uh, Valdosta State, a 30-17 to 17 win at final regular season game of the year. Coach, uh, West Georgia came in 3-7. But you've been saying all week, you even told me during your pregame show, it's a scary team because they've got a bunch of freshmen playing, and, and it's a team that looks like to me in the next couple of years going to be pretty darn good. I think you're exactly right, Dick. They came in here with a great game plan. You know, we play each other every year. Um, we know everybody on their staff. They know all of us, so we know what each other's going to do. We can call each other's plays out before we actually run them. Um, they came down here with nothing to lose. And, it, and we came out a little flat and early on um, defensively. We gave up some big plays. We bent, but we didn't break. We had a critical turnover there where they scooped it up and scored to make it seven to, to nothing. The thing I was most proud of is our guys never got down, never panicked. Um, we just chipped away and we took a 16 to 14 lead in at halftime. And, um, we felt a little bit better when we went in there at half and we came out the second half and played our kind of football. We all felt better. Let's get into the first half. Blazers, of course, coming. This was senior day, and you recognize, what, 15 seniors? 15 seniors, last regular season game um, at Cleveland Field, Dick. And um, these guys have been playing a lot of great football for us. And you talk about all the four-year totals of these boys. Um, it was good to send them out victorious. Um, one last time, last home game, 
um, here in Valdosta, Georgia, in front of a, an excellent crowd, a crowd that stayed all the way to the end, even when the game um, was pretty much won by the Blazer football team. West Georgia comes out and moves the ball a little bit, as has been the case with our defense, but they, they create a fumble and we get the ball back. The, the big thing, Dick, is we're, we're not giving up a whole bunch of points. And, and here we, we've started 10 straight games off with a screen pass, so we figured we'd come out and, and throw a little trick play off of it. Um, they didn't bite. Um, we got a lot of guys. You see us, we're, we're very close to catching guys in the backfield, um, but we're over-pursuing. We're not playing our techniques correctly all the time. Um, however, it just seems like we bow our neck when we need to. Um, here, Lee Tarpley, they, they force a fumble. We don't block it right. Um, that's a little fullback belly play we like to run. And um, they go up seven to nothing. And, you know, it, it was kind of funny. You know, our guys, they just get, oh, man, we got to start playing now. And there you saw Andre Zellner, who had a tremendous night, the best football game he's played all season. He's a sophomore. Mary Persons High School in Forsyth, Georgia. Um, in fact, his old high school coach, Dan Pitts, was at the game. Um, one of the legendary coaches here in the state of Georgia. And, um, I may have to get him back down here if that means Zellner's gonna play that good each and every Saturday. Zellner, seven catches, 111 yards, a touchdown reception, and, and you put him in the backfield. Well, we'll see that in a little <laughs> bit. We were trying to get the big man in there. There's Spencer Forts and another sophomore for Elberton, Georgia, making a play. Daryl Stevens had a nice night. I believe he had five catches, Dick. He's a former walk-on quarterback from Bainbridge. Um, here, we run a little keep with the quarterback on third and short, get a critical first down. Uh, this was another third down conversion. I believe we converted on five out of 12 third down conversions, um, but we hit the, the big conversions when we needed to. Um, big throw by Barrett Wilkes right here, the former teammate at Lowndes County High School. Um, Greg Lofton, and then this was the play that got us down real close, Andre Zellner, we catch him in a blitz. Um, he carries the ball all the way down to the one yard line and we put him in in the backfield and um, really we, we teach him to jump over the pile but there was no need to there and he runs it in for our first touchdown of the ball game. They made a little trickery. Yeah, you, you know, we talked to our guys all week, you don't ever know when they're gonna call it and they had this set up perfectly. You know, we run to the ball so well, Dick. Um, a lot of times those reverses get us, the draws get us. Um, Jason calls big play there um, on, the, on the stop, and this was a third down play that uh, Scott Falls saves a, a big gainer. Um, they run the draw again, and uh, we just do not do a very good job of tackling, and we go down like you see there, 14 to 7. I said early on that game, if they didn't have our attention early at the start, they certainly had it at this point. Well, we came out, um, the thing I was most pleased with is our offense responded every time um, that they, they scored. Here's a little screen play, Aaron Jenkins, who had a nice evening. Um, we didn't run the ball a whole lot, um, but we, he caught the ball, we were throwing, we were pass protecting well for the most part. Um, great throw by Wilkes here to Nakima Wright, who's, who's pulling double duty now, Dick, um, with Raymond Thomas being out of the lineup. He's playing our H receiver and our X receiver. And um, here's a little screen off of a um, no huddle offense, again to Greg Lofton. For the first down, we're forced to kick a field goal. Will Rohde puts it in um, to give us 10 points. Again, a little in, in, inefficient, um, if that is a word, Dick, in the red zone. You mentioned early on Daryl Stevens, 21. Uh, it seems like to me, I've said on the radio to him probably every time he catches, he makes big catches for us. It started with the Delta State game, and he makes, when he catches it, it's an important catch. He does, he's been playing really well. And the thing about him, he's got tremendous speed. He just has to get going a little bit. Um, and I, we've been real pleased with him. There was Derek Hill with a big sack. Derek Hill had a tremendous night. Um, we forced them to punt to us. We get the ball back with less than two minutes. Um, great job here by Daryl Stevens getting out of bounds. Uh, we come out of here, we run the ball with Zellner on second down. Get the first, Dick. We call a timeout and then the very next play, we throw a little, little pass that we've had success with this season. Hit Tyrone Jordan. Um, unfortunately, we missed the extra point, um, but that was a big boost for us going into halftime with that last touchdown. And the Blazers, that was a 22-yard pass. That was a five-play, 63-yard, 41 seconds, and a big part of that drive was a 15-yard penalty that they got that moved us from, I think, the 22 to start the drive at the 37. They got him for a late hit on Wilkes, which he took some shots the other day. They were a blitz in front, and normally when you see a blitzing team, you're going to make a bunch of big plays, and then they're going to happen.
happen in the first half. Um, however, we did, we went in with the lead, and as you see in the third quarter, we come out and we really establish uh, whose ball game it was supposed to be. All right, Coach, we'll be back with the second half highlights in just a little bit. The Chris Hatcher Show is also brought to you by Napa Auto Parts and Cass Birch Chrysler Plymouth Dodge Jeep in Quitman and Valdosta. Welcome back to the Chris Hatcher Show. Blazers go in at halftime leading 16 to 14. Uh, a calm mood, I assume, in the locker room. We were all pretty calm, Dick. We just um, felt like we didn't play our best half of football. Um, one thing in the first half is we never got to put our two group of, on offense, and it was kind of a weird first half for us as far as where we were getting the ball. So we went in, and then you'll see in a little bit, we played Buster the second series. We had planned on playing those guys early, never had the opportunity. So we were able to get a lot of people in the game while the game was still in doubt. And then at the end of the game, Everybody that was not being red-shirted got to play, and it was a, it was a great feeling to see everybody yeah. cheer for the young guys. Uh, but you talk about being a weird game. Tyran Robinson, our starting fullback, uh, didn't have a carry the entire night and may have played one of his best football games all season. That's kind of been the case this year. Um, a guy isn't getting the ball, he finds other ways to help the football team. That's what I was most proud about. All right, Coach, let's get into the second half right now. Blazers will get the second half kickoff which, of course, everybody likes to defer to the second half, and we've been pretty lucky. I think we've been on like a two or three game losing streak with that. We have. We have not done as good as we did last year um, as far as being able to defer. We come right out of the gate, and we get a huge return by Tyran Robinson. We're talking about he didn't get a carry, um, but he made the most of every touch that he had during the course of the game. We start with great field position. Um, we come right out of the gate. Wilkes is throwing the ball very well. There's Andre Zellner with a big catch across the middle. Here we have a little trouble with the snap, um, but good thing about Wilts, he, he's growing up this year. Um, he just picked it up real calmly and threw it to, to Zellner for a touchdown. Blazers go up 23 to 14, and uh, we think things are starting to come our way, but uh, West Georgia's not going to quit yet. No, they really, to their credit and their coaching staff's credit, they fought hard. And I, I was kind of concerned about that going into the game, Dick. There's a big third down catch by their tight end. I thought that was a fumble. Uh, by Wesley Brown, forced the strip, but they didn't give it to us. Derek Hill on the tackle. But, you know, they played very good against North Alabama last week. That game was pretty close all the way to the fourth quarter. And um, they, they did not quit. This was a heck of a drive for them. Um, we end up shutting them down here. Here's a great play on the screen pass by um, Dedrick Morrison and I believe Derek Hill. We forced them to kick the field goal. Uh, which was a, a big play for us because that still kept our lead um, at six points. 23 to 17, and uh, there you see Buster in the lineup. Yeah, we, I told Buster no matter what, we were going to play him on the second series. Um, here they end up getting a rough in the kicker call on Ken Bardet. What a great job he did. We have great coverage down there. D. Williford, Cody Thomas in on the tackle. We get the ball right back. Um, Good smart play by Buster. Everybody downfield was covered. We had Zellner in the backfield for pass protection. Um, that just added to his totals over the course of the evening. Big third down catch by Greg Lofton. You know, Greg's really been playing extremely well. Um, again, here's another catch. I, he had a tremendous evening. Um, got to hold on to the ball right there. Try to stretch it out and get an extra inch. And um, Here's a screen now. I tell you, you know, we throw those screens, Dick, and people say, well, they're not gaining many, not gaining many yards, but we're awfully close to breaking one. Hopefully in the playoffs we'll be able to do that. And this was kind of disappointing. Our defense forced a turnover. We're fixing to open the game up and, um, and have a big win. And then we turn right around and fumble. And, um, you know, we, we're not trying to get too fancy right there by putting Zellner, but we just felt like we needed a little bit of a spark down in that area of the field and we thought that he would be able to give it to us. An excellent running back you and I were talking about. Uh, West Georgia rushed for, I think, 120 yards, I believe, for the afternoon, Brandon Glover. He had a good evening, and then this guy, Jenkins, what a great run. You know, he's showing flashes of what he did for us last year. Very unfortunate. Um, we, we don't get to the corner on this play like we needed to, and we fumbled the football. That's three fumbles, one coming off the goal line and then two inside the five. But um, we just can't have Dick if we're going to beat a, a really talented football team. Um, people are going to start to make us pay for that, and we got to address that this week at practice. I think we're going to have the play of the game, what we call here, coming up on pretty soon with uh, 
pass to Bama Adams. This is late in the, in the fourth quarter here. Great play there by Tyran Robinson. Um, we faked the draw. It was an awesome draw fake. Um, hit Bama Adams, and he gets, goes off to the races. Got a little help from Rod Dalton. Um, that route, Dick, is something we've been working on all season long, and we finally ran it to perfection. Um, and that ended up being a huge play for us. Here they try what our guys call a little trickery. And um, we have two guys down there, Wesley Brown, hit him right in the face mask. I had to give him a hard time about it. Uh, but good covers there by him and Elliot Burks, both seniors. Um, good play here by Wilkes. Um, we miss a blitz off the edge and watch this. I told him how to do that, Dick. Um, hurdle the guy and he makes a big play. But I'm proud our guys are playing hard. Um, you know, we, even though we feel good about the lead that we have, we we're still want more. We're still attacking. Um, however, we were forced to punt there. And now our defense pretty much just shuts them down. Wesley Brown on the tackle there. Fred Dunn's in here trying to get over the top. Finally gets in on the tackle. Um, a guy that's really been playing well. 95 here, Doug Garrity um, is a senior. Um, got in the ball game and a big 30 to 17 win for us, Dick. Like I said, everybody got to play. I was real pleased with our seniors. And um, it was just a great day for the Valdosta football program in, in overall. Good win, Coach. We'll take a break and come back and look at scores from around the Gulf South Conference and the final conference standings. Welcome back to the Chris Hatcher Show. Uh, Coach, let's take a look at scores from around the conference. Final standings. Make some comments if you want. North Alabama, 44 to 10 over West Alabama. You felt like they were going to run the table after they defeated us here at Valdosta. And um, they're the conference champions. It's kind of a hard pill for me to swallow, Dick. Uh, but they deserve it. They ran the table. And um, we finished up number two this season. But there's a small chance that we may get to play them down the road. And I'll run through these. Wachita Baptist, 26 to 18 over uh, Henderson. Uh, Central Arkansas 26 to 7 over Arkansas Tech. Uh, Southern Arkansas 53 to 14 over Henderson State and Delta State 41 to 21 over Arkansas Monticello. North Alabama finishes 9 and 1, the Blazers 8 and 1. Uh, Southern Ark and Delta State, who the Blazers defeated both those teams, finished 7 and 2. And then the rest of the conference there. It was a, a very tough year in the conference. Everybody had tremendous football teams. We talked about it early in the year that this was probably the toughest the conference has been in quite some time, especially since I've been the coach at Valdosta State. Uh, we had a tremendous regular season, 10-1, and 8-1 and one in the conference. Uh, we finished two. This is the first time that we have not at least had a share of the title in four seasons. Very disappointed in that fact. Um, however, you, you look back at our, our record, Dick, and um, the times that we have been beaten, we've been beaten by very good football teams. And um, we just got to continue to to battle and battle and maybe down the road we'll get a chance to avenge our only loss of the season um, probably up at um, the University of North Alabama but it was a great year for the Gulf South Conference and um, hopefully next season that um, we will be able to regain our, our hold on the conference. All right coach we're going to take a break and when we come back we'll go a little bit more into the uh, regional play or the regional playoffs in the south and maybe even take a look at the national pitching as the, the division two playoffs begin next Saturday. Welcome back to the Chris Hatcher Show. Coach, uh, I'm going to take a look at the pairings for all the regions. Just going to run through the other ones. We'll get to the South region in a second. In the Northeast, you have uh, Edinburgh State at Saginaw Valley. Saginaw Valley, the number one ranked team in Division II. Grand Valley State, the defending national champions, playing at Bentley. In the West, you have Central Oklahoma at Mesa, St Mesa State. Uh, Tarleton State at Texas A&M Kingsville, a team we defeated last year to go to the national championship. And the, the East and the West, will those two winners, eventual winners, will play each other to go to the national championship. On our side of the bracket, in the Midwest, you have Pittsburgh State going to North Dakota. And then Southern Arkansas going to North Alabama. And Carson Newman, as we said earlier, coming to Valdosta State. One o'clock kickoff at Baysmore Hydro Stadium. We're awfully excited about playing at home, Dick. I mean, there's not much else you can say. We kind of saw this coming. Us and Carson Newman had already gotten together and it exchanged a few tapes just in case um, we were to play each other. Um, the only surprise in the region is that Southern Arkansas got in over Catawba and possibly Albany State. I shouldn't say it was a surprise. There were three very talented teams there and all three deserved to get in the playoffs. However, there was only one slot available. Southern Arkansas got in, probably on the strength of schedule. 
Um, that ought to be an interesting battle with Southern Arkansas at North Alabama. But of course, we're worried about Carson Newman, rematch of last year's South Region Championship. Um, Ken Sparks brings his crew to town and hopefully um, we can do the same thing we did to them last year and, and, and come out of here with a big win. Well, we know they're good. They, they defeated Valdosta Stack, uh, back in uh, Coach Mummy's last year up there in a the rain game at Carson Newman. And then the Blazers had defeated them down here last year. So it's going to be a good one. They're always good. Uh, early on, do you know what to expect from them? Run the ball, throw the ball? Well, they're going to run the option. And that's the biggest concern that we have is just because we don't see it a whole bunch. And on defense, they like to run a, an odd man front. It's a different type of defense than what we're normally used to seeing. So we have to switch gears when we play the teams from the sack because um, they play ball a little differently um, than the teams that we're used to seeing in the Gulf South Conference. But however, no matter what, there's 16 teams left. All of them are pretty good. Um, and you, you got to win four games to be national champions, and hopefully um, we'll take the first step okay, Saturday good. at 1 o'clock. That's the good news. The Blazers will play. And let me give you some ticket information. Tickets go on sale Monday morning at 9 o'clock at the PE Complex uh, over on uh, uh, where the Coliseum is. And those tickets, if you're a season ticket holder, you can buy your regular season ticket that you have for $10. Uh, those will stay on sale until Thursday. And then after Thursday, any of those tickets not purchased, the general public can purchase those for $12. The first 750 VSU students who go by uh, Student Affairs will get a free ticket. Uh, you can start that on Monday. And you can also purchase the regular game tickets at the bookstore there on Patterson Street. A uh, lot to talk about, a lot of excitement as the Blazers make the playoffs for the fourth straight year. And for the head coach, Chris Hatcher, I'm Dick Rocky. Everybody have a good week. Back deep, Tyran Robinson, he'll get the kick off at the two one yard line. Trying to find some room. Steps inside the 25 to 30. Tyran's at the 40. It's a foot race at the 50 to 40. Tyran at the 30. He's going to take it the distance. Touchdown, Tyran Robinson. No flag, Wallace. Well, got a flag on the field. Cut it up the middle. Came close to home side. It takes it about 97, 98 yards. And then if we need that. What a tremendous run by number 20, Tyran Robinson. The Chris Hatcher Show, your weekly look at Valdosta State University football with three-time Gulf South Conference Coach of the Year, Chris Hatcher. The Chris Hatcher Show is brought to you by Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers, Eat Great Even Late, Brewery Fresh Budweiser and Bud Light, who salute America's designated drivers, The Georgia Lottery, funding nearly three quarters of a million Hope Scholarships, Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. In Valdosta, Nashville, Thomasville, and Cairo. The Houston Sports Medicine Center, your friends at Bank of America. And by Powerade, Sprite, and Coca-Cola. Here's your host, Dick Rocky, with Coach Hatcher and a look at this week's Blazer football action. Hello and welcome to Chris Hatcher Show. I'm Dick Rocky along with the head coach. Valdosta State falls in the first round of the Division II playoffs to Carson Newman, 35-29. to And Coach Hatcher, just uh, one of those afternoons, a tremendous football team. Carson Newman came in here and, and did a good job against us. Dick, it was, I guess the best way to describe it, we had a nice season. And um, it was a very disappointing, bitter defeat to Carson Newman, a team that's become a big rival of ours in postseason play. This is the first time we've not practiced on Thanksgiving Day since the first year we were here. Um, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow. We didn't play well enough um, to, to win the game, of course, uh, but I, I thought that our kids gave great effort. Um, we played extremely hard. We played with a lot of emotion. We got down in a big hole early in the ball game and, and could have got blown out of the stadium. Carson Newman could have beaten us very badly. However, we, we sucked it up a little bit there in the second half, made a tremendous run at it. Um, and had a chance to win. Finally got the ball back with around 47 seconds to go in the game. Had a chance to come from behind 
um, score one more touchdown and, and produce a huge win. We just fell a little short on Saturday. Um, but nevertheless, I thought that our boys played hard, and that's probably what I'm most proud of. And that's what I remember the most about this football team. All right, Coach, let's take a break. We'll come back and take a look at the first half highlights. The Chris Hatcher Show is also brought to you by Nigem Jewelers with two Valdosta locations. Colson Business Systems, your Minolta dealer in Valdosta. And the Remerton Grill, home of the Monday night Coca-Cola Chris Hatcher Radio Show. Welcome back to the Chris Hatcher Show. And uh, Coach Hatcher, again, Carson Newman comes in and run that veer option, I guess is what you call it, and run it very effectively. But early on, we, we got off to a tremendous start there, the first couple of plays, and then boom, they hit us with the big pass play, we'll see. But it uh, looked like we had a little momentum early in that game. Well, if you call the, playing good the first two plays of the game, we <laughs> got off to a good start. Um, you know, we, we, we did not play well defensively. We, we gave up too many yards rushing. We gave up too many yards passing. We never took one phase of their game away. Um, and, and, and that ended up catching up with us late in the game. We, we, we just couldn't stop them. And then offensively, we got off to a very slow start, like we always do. Um, again, we were just trying to play a little field position battle there early on. And then once we got it cranked up, um, we were able to move the ball effectively. Um, but again, you got to take your hats off to Carson Newman. A lot of times when you, you get beat and you're not used to getting beat like Valdosta State um, has been the past few years, um, you, you always got to give credit to the other team. The other team was well coached. The other team was well prepared. The other team had very good football players that came down here and played extremely hard. Um, so we got to take our hats off to Carson Newman, even though it's a bitter pill to swallow. All right, Coach, let's take a look at the first half. And uh, Blazers, of course, at home, white and black jerseys. Kind of a bad omen here. Uh, Michael Green miss hits the ball. We kick it out of bounds on the opening snap. Dick, we come out with a lot of fire. Elliot Burks, a senior, uh, makes the first tackle of the game. Then Marlon Adams, another senior, he makes a sack. It's third and long, and we have a blitz on. They slip the tight end down the middle of the field. Um, pretty much untouched and that's kind of the way it was and then you didn't see they they go for a two-point conversion we don't line up correctly which is uh, very embarrassing that we did not line up on that one and they get a two-point conversion that could have come back and really haunted us um, however we were able to make up that deficit later on in the ball game and as you said the Blazers offensively get off the slow start here yeah, but the thing about it is, Dick, we, we, we've done that a lot, but we, we moved the ball. I mean, you can see we punted them down. They start on the 15-yard line. Um, when you play a team like Carson Newman, field position early is huge. And um, here they go. We do a good job here. Fred Dunn, Timmy Thompson, and they force us to kick, and we lose a little field position. Tyran Robinson had a tremendous evening not just on the offensive side, but on special teams. Uh, Rod Dalton, I believe, had five catches. But again, we stalled a little bit, and we, we pin them back around the 20-yard line. Um, and then they come out and hit a big play on us. Again, when you play a team like Carson Newman, Dick, you can't turn the ball over, and you got to play good field position. Here we lost the field position battle. Um, they hit us with the pitch on the option. We do not tackle very well. Spencer Fortson, um, luckily saved a touchdown. They go up 15 to nothing before we, we know what hit us. And here's the uh, Blazers do get the momentum back a little bit, we think, on this uh, mm -hmm. tremendous kickoff return by Ty Randall. Oh, what a great job. Um, we, we did a nice job of engaging our blocks. All those guys did extremely well. Ty Rand hit the corner and he just outran them all. I thought he was going to get tackled at midfield. And now all of a sudden our guys started getting some life and some emotion about them. 15 to 7, feeling pretty good. Um, here we go, we kicked it down the middle, kick it to about the six yard line. Our wedge busters do not show, we get pushed out. Uh, Michael Green, you know, he does a good job of slowing the returner up there, and Fred Dunn um, comes in and makes the tackle. Very next play, they hit us uh, on a tight end pass um, off the option, which is a very difficult play to defend. And, what little momentum we had, we don't have it anymore, Dick, at this point. Well, it's 22 to 7 right now, and as you said uh, in the paper, and I was thinking too, this could turn into a blowout right now. Yep, here we miss a tackle on the straight dive. You know, um, we talked earlier, we did not take any phase away from them, but however, we, they made a mistake, they fumbled, so we got a little momentum again. We're moving the football, good catch there by Bam Adams. This is third and one. We run the quarterback sneak, um, get the first down. Here's a play that's been good to us. We hit um, 
Greg, Greg Lofton on the dig route across the middle. And now we're trying to throw our bread and butter down around the goal line. Um, Raymond Thomas gets held up. You, you just can't force the ball there. That's a, a sophomore mistake, Dick, in the end zone. And um, instead of even just getting any points out of that, uh, we come away with nothing. And here's a great play, Spencer Force, and a guy that's really been playing well. Um, I can't tell, I believe that's Jason Koss who makes the tackle. Dedrick Morrison squeezed the play, and, um, and then all of a sudden we would stop them, and, and their third down conversions um, really were the difference in the game. They were awesome on third down. And it's 25 to seven right now. We're really worried, but to, to your football team's credit, uh, as you said, they're coming, they're battling back. Well, they, they've been in a lot of big games. Here's a great play by Barrett Wilkes. They, they blitz us a blitz. We had never seen them run. Um, Tyrone Jordan just does not come up with the catch, and that was kind of the, 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 the feeling all night. We would not make the play when we really needed to make it. Um, here, D. Williford, here's a guy, he's been Mr. Lucky all season, has a chance to intercept one. Um, but we force him to punt. One of the few stops we had there in the first half. We hit Rod Dalton on what we call a little shake route. Um, here's one of our best screen plays that um, we come back and run later in the game that we had a chance to make a huge play off of. Um, we try a little post route over the middle. Um, our, our receiver, Greg Lofton, ends up getting held, and here we hit Nakima Wright for a touchdown. Uh, whether he was in or not um, is questionable, but the referees ruled it a touchdown. Now we, we got a little bit momentum. Um, it's only, a, a, I believe, an 11-point game at this time, um, and, and, and we're feeling pretty good about having an opportunity to come back here, Dick. It's 25 to uh, 14 at this point, and uh, again, we sort of have slowed them down a little bit as far as that, that blowout we're thinking. This is the last play of the first FD Williford. Yeah, we just let the clock run out here and, and take it. You know, we, we could have gotten blown out like we talked about. We just kind of squeaked ourselves back in the game. And now we're going at halftime, and, and we have a little momentum. We're feeling like we can compete with these guys. And we go in and make a few adjustments. And as we'll see in a little bit, um, it, it turned out to be a great second half of football for Valdosta State. All right, Coach, we'll be back with the second half in just a little bit. The Chris Hatcher Show by Napa Auto Parts and Cass Birch, Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, Jeep, and Quitman, and Valdosta. Hello, welcome back to the Chris Hatcher Show. Coach, you're going into the locker room, have regained maybe a little bit of the momentum there, so you guys and the coaches maybe have to be feeling a lot better than we did in that first quarter. I wouldn't say we were feeling a lot better, but we had, we've been behind many a time since I've been the coach here, and we go in there and we talk about the same things. To come from behind against a good football team, you got to take it one at a time. you got to chip away. Um, you can't get down on yourself, and you just got to believe that you're going to get it done. We had several opportunities in the second half to retake the lead um, and, and to have a big upset win after falling behind so early. We just did not have enough firepower on either side of the ball um, to get that done. All right, let's look at the, first, or the second half. Blazers got what they wanted. We will receive the second half kickoff that uh, things uh, don't really get off to a good start for us. Well, we end up, um, we, we have a good drive right here, Dick. Um, and, and really, I thought we got off to an unbelievable start here at the, the, the beginning of the second half. Got a great return here. Um, we end up gaining a couple first downs. And um, as you'll see here, we, we pull out some things out of, a, um, out of our bag of tricks. Great play here. This was a big third down conversion for us. Um, we end up faking the punt here. Great job by Daryl Stevens, 21. Good block by Lee Tarpley, and then Ken Barnett actually got hurt on that play. Um, we come back, we do get sacked right here. You know, again, we had some a good chance, and then all of a sudden, you can see Brian Irvin there, one of our blockers, gets blown back. And, and I, really, if we recovered that kick right there, that should have been our ball because they touched it. Um, you know, I, I don't. I, I thought we moved the ball well, which we showed signs. However, we were able to get that field goal there. It could have been a different ball game all together and then they come back and we do force them to punt and we come right out of the gate here big pass to Rod Dalt what a great catch and throw then we come right back and um, I thought that this was one of the turning points of the game we're hitting the Kima right on a wheel right we've been setting that up all week um, we could not blow them off the ball good enough Dick to get it in the end zone we fake the bootleg. We're trying to throw it to Steve Skeen. Barrett Wilkes does a great job of getting it in. 
Then we go for two, and Tyran Robinson is the best I've ever seen at the halfback pass. And now all of a sudden it's a three-point game, and here we go. Yeah. Just uh, needing your defense to step up for you right here a little bit, and uh, trying to remember Carson, uh, Carson Newman going to come right back here and score a field goal, I think, a little bit. Well, we, we got a little bit of fire in our bellies here. Our guys are playing a little bit more emotionally here. Here, boy, that's uh, Timmy Aganga Williams almost had an interception. We forced them to punt. Now, Dick, we really got the momentum. We're catching them off guard. They're lining up slow. You could tell their defensive players were breathing heavy. They were extremely tired. Big third down catch by Andre Zellner. If he doesn't break that tackle, we're a little bit short. We come out, you can tell, we, we catch them off guard again. Rod Dalton, first down play. We throw a screen um, the play before and, and get down inside the red zone, inside the 20. They call us for holding on the perimeter, which I thought was a very questionable call. And then this was pretty much the backbreaker for us. We had all the momentum, we're down by three. We throw an interception and, and what even made it worse was the guy returned it all the way to midfield and, and gave them some good field position. And, and they end up doing a good job here defensively. Jason calls here, Spencer Fortson in on the tackle. Geo Blaylock from Peach County. And what a field goal kicker they had. Uh, he really boomed that one through to put them up by, um, I six. think, six points yeah. at that time. 48 yard field goal, that was good from over 50. So we're still only down six, a touchdown, we're ahead. Yeah, you know, and we, we felt real good. So we come right back, this is the beginning of the fourth quarter. I felt our defense needed a little bit of break. Um, this is a third down play. We come out in the eye and we're really pounding at them. We try the screen pass. Tyran um, just drops it. But I tell you what a great game he played other than that play. And they come out. Now, this was a, to me a, a critical point of the ball game, um, Dick. We had to stop them. We pinned them deep. Got a tremendous kick from Will Rohde. Tremendous coverage. We got them backed up and uh, we, we allow them out, they just got a first down. This was their first down play um, that you just saw. Then they come and they hit a crossing route over here on a third and long and, and really change the field position. If we could just get a stop right there, get the ball back, we really got a chance, but they come down very methodical. Um, I believe this was an 85 or 90 yard drive that they had. Um, here we're, we're just hanging on for dear life um, they give the fullback dive, we miss a tackle there, miss another tackle. They take it in for the touchdown to go up by 13 with over six and a half minutes to go in the game. And of course, we're in a two score situation, but uh, you know, here come the Blazers. Yeah, we do a good job here. We go back to the eye, there's Aaron Jenkins. Um, here was a play we've been setting up. We were trying to throw it deep um, to Raymond Thomas. However, they covered it pretty good. You know, they're playing a little prevent defense at this time. Um, get a little fortunate right here to Daryl Stevens. The ball glances off their defender's hands. And on this particular play, a play we've seen all season, we throw it up to big Andre Zellner from Forsyth, Georgia, Mary Persons, and makes a tremendous catch. And now the game's only at six, Dick, with five minutes to go. This is what I really thought we would bow up. Michael Green kicks the ball in the end zone. Uh, we have three timeouts left. All we gotta do is stop them for three plays, use our timeouts and we get the ball back with at least four minutes to go in the game. However, we could not stop them. They were too tough up front for us, Dick. Very physical. Um, they end up running close to four minutes off. Four minutes and what, 14 seconds off of the clock. We get the ball back with 47 seconds. No timeouts. Um, that was a fourth down play. Tried to hit Greg Lofton on the deep comeback route. And um, our season's over with. Um, you know, I was real disappointed, um, not, not only as a, as a coach, but disappointed for the young men on the football team. Um, we had a tremendous senior class that has had a lot of success, and the expectations of this football team and this community um, are very high. If we were somewhere else and we finished 10-2, and two, everybody would probably be ecstatic, but um, we feel like we're in the national championship hunt every season. Um, that's our goal to be national champions. We haven't reached it yet, may not ever reach it. We're going to sure enough shoot for it again next year. But um, I was very disappointed for our seniors that we, we couldn't go out on a little bit better note. But um, nevertheless, like we said at the beginning of the show, um, it was a nice season. And I guess that's the best way to put it. All right, Coach, we'll take a break and be back with more of the Chris Hatcher Show.
Welcome back to the Chris Hatcher Show. Coach, take a look at scores from around the nation in the playoffs and uh, make some comments if you want to. Uh, in Northeast Saginaw Valley, 33-9 over Edinburgh. Grand Valley State, the defending champion, 65-36 over Bentley. And Grand Valley and Saginaw will play in the south. Uh, a little bit of a surprise, North Alabama, 48-24 over Southern Arkansas. You know, I thought that'd be a little bit closer score um, with, with that. I really thought Southern Arkansas may upset North Alabama. However, um, with us getting knocked off, it doesn't really matter who, who goes on from here. That's what I was thinking. We don't really care to be doing this. It doesn't matter either. one bit. <laughs> Carson Newman will go to North Alabama, and that should be a good one. In the Midwest, uh, North Dakota 24-14 over Pittsburgh State. Winona State 10-3 over Emporia State. And in the West, uh, Central Oklahoma 20-15 over Mesa State. And the team we beat last year to go to the national championship uh, game, Texas A&M Kingsville 34-10 over Tarleton State. And uh, those teams will play to get into the semifinals. That's pretty much, I think, the team I'm going to pull for, Texas A&M <laughs> Kingsville. Um, Richard Cundiff, their head coach, is a good friend of mine. You know, it's kind of funny, did not know him until we played him in the semifinals last year. Now I, I talk to him probably once a month. What a great fellow he is, great job he's done in his program. Coach, it's been a great year for the Blazers, 10-2, and two at, uh, six losses since you've been here in four years. You, you're losing uh, 15 seniors this year. Uh, a lot of them, several of them have been with you for four years. You recruited them, but uh, what a tremendous senior class you're going to be uh, saying goodbye to. It's been a great class. You always hate to say goodbye at the end of the season. I told them after the ball game that I did not have a speech prepared um, for, for a, a defeat. Um, I told those guys how much we appreciate them and how much we appreciate them building the tradition that we wanted to establish here at Valdosta State. We're awfully pleased with them and their families. Um, I thank their mamas and daddies and their aunts and uncles for allowing them to come to Valdosta State and, and take a chance on a guy who was 26 years old, first head coaching job, and, and allow them to, to come to Valdosta State. They've been the backbone of our team. Um, we want to thank all the coaches and administrative support staff, you and, and, and Tom, for the, the great job y'all did this season and all the, the hours put in. Um, and then we need to thank the folks in the community that have really um, been a, a great help to our football program as far as especially raising that money for us to fly, which enabled us to get to the playoffs. And um, there's just too many people to sit out here and thank them. Um, we got a tremendous support group that puts this show on for me and you every, every Sunday. Um, but it's been a good season. Um, however, we have to go back to the drawing board, do a good job of recruiting, um, have a great off season in order that we can make a run to be number one get back to be the Gulf South Conference champions, and number two, get back to Florence, Alabama for the national Okay, title. Coach, congratulations again on a tremendous season. The Blazers finished 10-2, and two, and we look forward to Coach Hatcher and his staff being back next year as we continue again our pursuit for the national championship in Division Two. But for the head coach, I'm Dick Rocky. Until next year, everybody have a great week.